So there you go, John Kane here. Uh, no intro music this week. I'm uh, I'm in my own studio, and I just thought I'd reach out to you guys a little bit. Uh, I am preempted this week on WBAI. No cause for alarm. It's just you know kind of the typical um, the way WBAI handles their their fund drives. Um, I I've been on you know quite a bit during uh, this fund drive, especially after coming back after being uh, having the, the shutdown. Um, but I do, I, I um, so I, I, I did want to come, come on the air, at least via Facebook and, and talk to you a little bit. Um, again, my show has returned to a two hour time slot. We are three to five, although we aren't on this week, uh, on, on the radio. Um, and I, I just want people to know that, uh, you know, that, that I'm glad to get the two hours, uh, get the, the one hour back, so we're back to two hours, so we can take a lot more time for your phone calls. Um, unfortunately, even after the shutdown, we aren't out of the woods yet at WBI. We have, we have some major problems financially, um, as does the whole Pacifica network. And we, one of our, you know, one of the ways that, you know, that, that we, we save ourselves is, is through you, the listener. So for, for those of you who can make a contribution to WBAI, we greatly appreciate it. I know we, we come to you far too often. We're, we're far too often in a, in a fun drive, uh, or, or desperate fun drive, uh, um, uh, stage and 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 I wish and I wish we weren't. But I, I again, even this week, even though I'm not on the air, <laughs> I'm asking you if you're catching us on on Facebook Live, uh, go to the pledge line, go to five one six six two zero three six zero two, make your pledge. Hey, and do it in the name of the show, especially if you do it today, <laughs> especially today. Make sure you mention Let's Talk because uh, this time slot is now being occupied for at least for today by some other fundraising show. So uh, you do need to sometimes be specific and let them know that when you're making a contribution uh, that you're doing it in the name of Let's Talk with John Kane. Um, even, if, even as you follow the the process for becoming a WBI buddy, you'll see there's a place you can either list all WBI shows um, or you can list a specific show. I would greatly appreciate it if you would list this show as the show that you are making a donation in the name of. It doesn't come to me. It still goes to WBI, so you don't have to worry about where the money goes. And and I know it is kind of tough. And we had a couple of callers over the last couple of weeks that that made some really good points. If they they know all the donations go to WBI, they don't go to the specific shows. But sometimes they'll listen and say, you know, but if I make a donation in the name of this show, they're giving away something, you know, for um, for a donation. And so they may be drawn more to the premium than to the program. And, and look, I don't want to turn Let's Talk into into a home shopping network, and and I don't want to come on each um, each fund drive with some great product that I'm going to ask you to make a donation so you can receive it. Yeah, I'll give I'll give gifts away uh, for for people signing up for buddies. I'll you know I've offered a Murray Porter CD if you signed up uh, as a buddy in the name of Let's Talk. Um, for twenty dollars a month or more, I've offered uh, some uh, ornaments from Tuscarora Woodworks. If you sign up, just even at ten dollars a month. But I, I really don't want to get into being a, like I said, uh, hawking products on, on the show. And and I'm not condemning other other shows that do that. And some shows are based on you know uh, putting together their own CDs and their own information, and and that's fine. So uh, while I'm not criticizing that, that's not what I plan to do. My show is a talkback show. My, my whole goal here is to present a topic, present a perspective, and then go to you. Go to you, the phone, the, the listeners, and, and have you go to the phones and, and call us and engage me in a conversation. You know, I got to tell you, last week uh, I had one, one comment that, that sticks with me so strongly. We were talking about identity and how, uh, and frankly, I was talking about how the word American uh, defaults to people envisioning a white person. Uh, and in fact, if you're a Native American or a African American or Black American or Latin American, then then you get then you get your space. But the word American all by itself, it automatically mean, means white people. And uh, so I had somebody call in to uh, you know kind of discuss that a little bit. And the one thing that this caller said, and and, uh, and well, it may not seem like the most profound thing. She said, "I my ancestry, my ancestors were not slaves." She was a black woman. She goes, my ancestors weren't slaves. They were enslaved. And I thought that was a point 
that you know again coming from a listener um these are points that that i fail to make is that we get locked into this into language and what I try to do with my show is not only provide a platform for you, the listener, to, to engage me and to engage other listeners with, with some of these thoughts, but I think that was a great point. Just because somebody casts us into a, a, a situation of victimhood doesn't mean that, that, vict- that, that we are those victims. Those, uh, being that victim doesn't define us. Black people weren't slaves. They were people. They were human beings. Native people are not tribes or tribal members. We're human beings. We're not redskins. We're not warriors. We're not, hey, chief. No, we're human beings. These words that get associated with us and, or these, uh, again, these, these labels, merciless Indian savages. Does that sound familiar? Declaration of Independence. Look it up. That isn't who we were. Somebody may have assigned that label. Somebody may have assigned this idea of a warrior to us, but that doesn't define us either. The vast majority, the overwhelming majority of our times throughout history, you know what our men did? They raised their children. The same thing that our women did. They weren't in a constant state of war, yet that's the image that people have have created for us. I think it's really important that people understand that we need to control our own identities, our own images, and how we are portrayed by others. You know, again, once again today, I saw the word tribe and tribal listed on, uh, you know, in a a story from the Atlantic. Talking about every time you want to call down the politicians, oh yeah, they went tribal. But they have no problem assigning that word tribe or tribal to native people. Like it doesn't mean something derogatory when they're talking about us. Why? Because for us, that's that's, what, what, that's an improvement over what? you know, um, carrying clubs and stones. This is, this is why it is so important that we have a conversation. And, and, and I'm very grateful that WBI gives me an opportunity to once again, come down to New York city and be on the air for two hours. So people can see my humanity so they can see who I am and know that I'm not the exception to the rule. Again, don't give me that. Oh, he's awfully articulate. Articulate for a for a native person, no, or well spoken, no. Don't even do, same thing they do to black people, no. Don't give me that. I'm not any different than than a thousand or so other people that uh, that I live live in the community with. You know, some some of us may have better vocabularies than others, but we all have the same presence of mind. We all have clear ways of thinking about who we are and how we are misrepresented in history books by government by the media, by Hollywood, by the internet, all of that stuff. We understand all that. I think it's really, really important that WBI provide this space for the kinds of conversations that not only that I bring to the table, but that you bring to the table as listeners. It is so important. I, you know, when, when people think that I'm doing something extraordinary because I spend 16 hours traveling to do a to a, what was a one hour show now once again a two hour show you don't understand how much value that has to me as a native person to me as the people that i don't speak for but i speak from i speak from a, a larger group of native people and and while being gunyagahaga or mohawk as you know it um i don't speak for all other native peoples i do speak from those native peoples and when, when people talk about what the vast majority of Native people think, I don't pretend to, to represent what that is. I'm not speaking as if I can do the same thing that I criticize others for, put us all into one category, lump us all together and say, I can speak from a pan-Indian standpoint. No, but I offer a, pers- a perspective that has been so overrun. And, and it's not a, a, a single perspective. There are many people who share the views that I have. But I'm not speaking for them either. I'm just presenting a view that is not going to be offered anyplace else. And the fact that WBAI gives me two hours a week to do that, when we're not in fun drive, is just is a great thing. So I do spend the money for a train ticket, for a bus ticket, for a place to stay, for you know, for meals. And I, and I so I do spend two or three hundred dollars a week to do a show in New York. But it's worth it to me. 
It is worth it to me. And I hope it's worth it to you. Because not because I'm trying to convince you to see things my way, but I'm only trying to convince you that there are people like me who see things my way. And perhaps, just perhaps, when you hear the perspective that I offer, it'll make you think. It'll make you think that yours isn't the only perspective. Not asking you to change yours, but just know that others exist. You know, these are, we always say this, right? These are trying times. I don't know that, that things are any worse with a, with a Donald Trump in the, in the White House than they were with a Barack Obama in the White House. I can see a lot. Of, this guy's got huge character flaws. This guy a, uh, is a mess. I think he's a terrible human being. And, and frankly, the worst human being to sit in the White House in, uh, in my lifetime. But in the overall scheme of things, when I saw that this incompetent moron was going to be elected, or the prospect that he might be elected, I'm thinking, you know, there's only so much damage he can do to me. We don't all have to go along with what, you know, what a quote unquote leader suggests. We don't have to pollute more because Donald Trump says we can. We don't have to uh, lower our standards for what is morality because, because Donald Trump has done that. And that's kind of my message. Look, I know that there are a lot of native people in, in various places across the country who have different political views than I do. And, and that's fine. All I'm trying to suggest is that we do exist, many of us, uh, you know, try like hell to exist as distinct people, not as just another American or a person of color within the, uh, within the fabric of American society. No, I don't consider myself a minority. Why? Because I live in a community where we, we're all, it's a native community. We are not just the majority, we are the people. We don't have to worry about who is a minority and who isn't when, when, I, when I live on Seneca territory. And when I go into New York, I'm just going there as a visitor. I'm not, look, I, I come to you as a voice, but I'm not one of you. And I don't say that to be better or worse but just distinct. And you know what? There's not a single one of you listening to, to this show who can say there's somebody who, who is exactly like you. We are all distinct. But I know there are some, there are many people who are fighting for a standard. They're fighting to standardize their rights. They're fighting to standardize their lives, their incomes, their, you know, their, their, their happiness. And so they look and they say, I want to be like him. I want, I want to live like that person. I don't want to live like Donald Trump. I, I don't. And in fact, I don't want to live like you, you guys do in, in New York City. I, I love where I live. And, and the fact that, uh, that our environment has not been jeopardized as much as others. And we aren't as far as, as much at risk as, as others are. But it doesn't mean that I say the hell with the rest of you. What I try to bring is a conversation that perhaps, just perhaps, somebody will take, some, say, take something from. And maybe change their behavior a little bit. Maybe they'll be a little bit more concerned about the environment. Maybe they'll be a little more concerned about the homeless. Maybe they'll be a little bit more concerned about people who are impoverished or people who are oppressed or are, are vilified or victimized on a, on, on, on a continuous basis. Look, we're barraged with a lot of information and, and we get it from the internet. We get it from radio, TV, print, um, uh, television, movies. We're barraged with this stuff. And listening to people just argue for the sake of arguing, like this impeachment stuff. I'm, I'm just happy that I have two hours a week that I get to come to you. I do want to let people know that I not only do this show in New York City, I not only do Let's Talk with John Kane. But I do Let's Talk Native, which is a show that is a little bit more, even more specifically geared towards Native issues. Back home on the Cattaraugus, where I'm broadcasting from here today, from the Cattaraugus Territory of the Seneca Nation. So if you want to find um, and, and catch my shows, I, my shows, including my New York shows and my shows back in Seneca ter Territory, are all put up as podcasts. So you can find it by searching Let's Talk Native with John Kane podcast. You can ask Alexa. You can, you know, Google it. 
You can go uh, you can go to the YouTube channel uh, and and look for my YouTube channel which is Let's Talk Native TV. I post videos of um of my both my New York shows and my shows back home and some short form videos. So I encourage you to go to my YouTube channel. You can uh, just search it, Let's Talk Native TV. And you can subscribe to the channel so you get notifications when we do new videos. And we do plan on doing a lot more. We've done quite a few and we're going to do more. And once we get into a pattern, we hope to do a new video every couple of weeks. We're not there yet. Well, that's, what, that's what our goal is for, for the new year. So I'm asking you to check out some, some of the shows. Know that, that I'm going to provide you with information about history that you've never seen before anywhere else. And you can fact check it. I mean, look, I, I welcome anybody not only hearing something that I say here on my show in New York, but uh, on my show back home and say, no, you got that wrong. And correct me. And, and I'll stand corrected. But normally, I'm pretty accurate about the stuff that I, uh, that I put up there historically. And, and look, and if it is uh, inaccurate in any way, we'll make the correction. It probably won't change the point of, uh, you know, for, for why I bring up some of these historical facts. It won't change what Lincoln did or Washington did or what Clinton did or what Obama did. It won't change any stuff. Eh, it could be a date or something off. But let's have that conversation. And... When you get engaged with somebody over Black Lives Matter, you, you can be more well-informed about what, you know, what is happening. You know, what are the numbers? What, what are the percentages? What, what does it look like to be a person of color? As I say all the time, Native people are, are actually proportionally have a higher risk of death by cop than Black people do, except for the, that one demographic, the age 16 to 22. And it's not a competition. We don't want to win this war. But, the, but again, the reality is more white people are killed by cops. A lower percentage of the population, but because there's so many white people compared to the rest of us, of course they're going to be uh, victimized, uh, you know, at, not at a higher level, but in total numbers. It's like talking about the uh, Trump cutting back on the food stamps issues. More white people are going to ne be negatively impacted by that by, than by native people or black people or, or, or brown people. Why? Because there's more white people on food stamps. I don't even know if you do percentage of population. I mean, it still may be more white people, but the total numbers, there are significantly more white people on, on food stamps than, uh, than people of color. <laughs> and many of those white people will still vote for Donald Trump because that's the, that's the mindset they have. So I am grateful to have an opportunity to, to present some of this information and maybe make you think a little bit more and to be taught something. Again, my hat's off to, to, the, to the caller last week who, who said my ancestors weren't slaves. I, I, you know, that, it, it may not sound like anything really you know, tremendously profound, but it was to me. Because we can look at what has been done to us. If you've, if you've been raped, that doesn't mean that you should be defined as a raped victim. Or even a rape survivor. There's a whole lot of other parts of your life other than that one incident. And while it may affect you, and I don't think we should, we should hide from what we have been the victims of, we should not be shaped by it. And that's, that's the message. That's the takeaway that I took from the caller last week. And I was grateful for that call. So I want to thank you guys for listening to the show. Again, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Let's Talk Native TV. You can follow me at Twitter, on Twitter, which is Let's Talk Native. Um, again, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Let's Talk Native TV. Um, and you can sign up for, for the podcast, and, and whatever your platform is. I mean, uh, once we put our audio up on, on SoundCloud, it goes out across uh, all, the, all the major uh, uh, podcast platforms. So, so look for it. And, you know, check out a couple of old, old shows. Sometimes I got to go back and listen to what I said before. But I will say, I don't have to go back and listen to make sure I don't contradict myself. It's one thing that, that, I'll, that I'll say. If you've listened to, to, to my shows over the years, there's no contradiction. I, you know, I'll stand correct. Like I said, I'll stand corrected. But, there, but there's no contradiction. I've been really consistent. And again, my show is not uh, a feel-good show. It's, hopefully, it's a feel-smart show. I hope, I hope when, you, when you get done watching and, and listening to my program that you feel like you, you gained something. And if that makes you feel good, fine. 
but I'm not trying to make everybody happy and comfortable. I'm not, I'm not comfort food. I'm, but I'm also not the angry Indian as I've been, been described. So anybody who, who suggests that say, no, I don't think he's angry. I'm passionate. And, and I do want to express some of these views that, that I think are over, that are washed over. But know that I have three children, nine grandchildren, I'm, you know, been, been married for over 37 years. My life is not um, uh, torture. <laughs> I, I'm not angry as a human being. There are things in, in societally that bother me, and I talk about those issues. And I hope you do too. Because, you know, as, as, as I've said before, it's not enough to say that, you're, um, that you are uh, not a bigot or that you're not a racist, or that you're, or you're not prejudiced, or, or, or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever the, the claim somebody could make is. It's not to say that you're not something. Because if you're not against those things, if you're not against poverty, if you're not against racism, if you're not an anti-racist, then you're somewhat complicit with it. At, at some level. At some level, if you can, if you try to ignore a conversation, somebody asks me, how do you, how do you deal with, with, with somebody who's a racist? How do you how do you deal with that? I confront it, I stand up to it, and then I move on. I I I survive the the event. I'm not going to let any racist incident take a chunk out of me. But at the same time, when I hear something that is said, I immediately respond. I respond. I confront it. And I'm not saying I have to respond you know, violently or aggressively. Sometimes, you know, sarcasm and humor are the best way to deal with it. And I don't mean to make light of it. But sometimes there, there, you can also use humor in a way that makes people cringe. And I'm not afraid to do that. Somebody wants to tell me a racist joke. I heard somebody else say this. Just tell them, I don't get it. Explain it to me. You hear somebody say something that's a sexist joke, say, I don't get it. Explain it to me. You don't have to just smile and pretend it's okay. You, you, we can confront these things. And, and for those of you who have family, family members who are, are just so much um, uh, different than you politically, I mean, all, a lot of to do over, wow, Thanksgiving is going to be tough because there's going to be families, uh, some who support Trump and some who... I don't have a problem talking about politics or religion. And if people are uncomfortable around me, then let them avoid me. I don't need to avoid, avoid people. But I don't need to shy away from a, from a family member when I tell somebody how I feel about Trump or his wife or his kids or anybody else. Or how I feel about religion. And the, the evil that has been done in the name, not just of Christianity, but, but almost all major religions. But again, as a, as a native host... I do not feel compelled to um, to fulfill somebody's vague idea about what native spirituality is supposed to be. I don't do prayers on this show. I don't give buffalo speeches. I don't resort to pidgin English so I can meet somebody else else's stereotype of uh, of what I'm supposed to sound like. I'm going to give you honest opinion. I'm going to try to give you verifiable facts. And then, I'm going to, and then I'm going to welcome your call. I'm going to welcome your call so, so I can understand how you are receiving the message that I'm trying to get out there. One final note before, and, I, and this is just going to be a, 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 you know, a quick you know, address to you more than anything. We are struggling at WBAI financially. Um, one of the things that I would like to do is, uh, is ask you, ask you, uh, what, what recommendations can you make in a, in a changing media market, and, and all media, print has suffered, radio has suffered, television has suffered. The internet has changed our lives in profound ways. But understanding that, that we are on the radio in New York City, FM 99.5 in New York City, and we, we do stream via our, our website. I don't think we do enough. I think we need a WBI app. I think we need, you know, uh, you know, a better a way to promote our, our podcast on the station through the station. But I'm asking you, 
asking you, the listener, what recommendations do you make on how we fund WBAI? I mean, some of you like the product. Some of you like getting premium sent to you. But that's not enough. That's not getting it done. And, and it won't get it done. This has been the funding model that we've used far too long exclusively. Look, we get the occasional bequest in somebody's, uh, uh, you know, in somebody's will or, or somebody will make a, uh, the occasional large donation. We don't have grant funding. And, and we may get some, but we don't have any. If you know somebody, uh, a philanthropic organization that is willing to support something like WBAI, Whatever it takes. I mean, I don't know. We don't. We we do things a little different here, but there's there has to be ways to accommodate getting large single donors. And if you have a suggestion, one of the suggestions that I had made is I would love to come down and do speaking engagements in New York City. If you work at a school or a civic organization or a trade organization or a university, whatever, and you already have a budget for speakers. I'd be willing to come down and give a presentation on, on a wide variety of topics, any number of topics, native and non-native. If you would make that same, um, the same honorarium that you would pay me, if you'd make that contribution to WBAI. That's one of the suggestions that I made. I would like to see WBAI create an entire cast as a, as a speaker's bureau. I'd like to see us do TED Talks, all of, the, all of this stuff. New York City is a city of 10 million people in, in New York and the surrounding area. It's impossible for me to believe that we can't fund predominantly listener-supported radio. We should have 100,000 people listening to WBAI. And if we don't, then we need to work, work to get those numbers up. So I ask you, the listener, and you guys can message me on Facebook. You can send me you know, instant messenger if you want. Whatever, whatever way you want to reach out, you can call in. When we, next week when we're, when we're back live on the air in, in w, uh, um, in, at, at our new WBAI studios, call in and make a suggestion. I will not shut down a listener. I don't care if you make a suggestion. If you want to criti uh, you know, criticize the station, the show, uh, we'll take the criticism. I may not agree with you, but, we'll, but we'll, we'll, we'll take your thoughts. But what I'm really looking for is not just criticism, but suggestions. Not just on how to make the shows better. If that's the problem, and I don't even know that that's the problem. If, if that's what we have to do is in, improve our programming, all right, we'll, we'll take for some suggestions there, including how I improve this program. I mean, I'm trying to do what I think works. I, we, we stream the show live via Facebook. I post it up, I, like I said, I put it up as a podcast. I put it up as a YouTube video. Maybe the direction that I'm going isn't, uh, isn't that effective. If, you have, if you're more technically savvy than I am, and, and trust me, I'm not, then maybe perhaps your suggestions could, could be helpful. I know we can't exist in, in the media market without the internet. And I don't know that WBI is currently using it that effectively. So if you have suggestions on how we become more effective, how do we not only expand listenership, but expand revenue? I'm asking as just one producer and, and, and all of our producers could use, uh, use a helpful hint. So, look, if you have a suggestion for me and you happen to call in on another talkback show during the week, then make the suggestions there. Let's, let's get this conversation going. The thing that I try to do more than anything else is start, promote, and extend conversations. We need to have a meaningful conversation on how it is that we can make WBI more effective more, you know, more sustainable. So um, I'm, I'm, asking, uh, I'm asking for your help. I'm asking for your suggestions. And um, more than anything else, I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you for watching the show, for listening to the show, and, you know, coming to my events. One final note before I go. I was planning on doing an event next week at the Brooklyn Commons, but um, the space got double booked. So we'll have to do something in January. So you know, just as, as an aside, look for us to do another event. Uh, and it'll, it'll probably be a film or of some, some sort. But um, uh, I, and I want to thank all of you who come out. And look, we get anywhere from you know, 20, 30, 50, you know, 60 people in, in that room sometimes. And, uh, and it is a great feeling to have you come out to an event and spend time so we can look in each other's eyes as we're talking. I love the phone calls, but there's nothing like meeting you, you folks in person. And so I, I appreciate you guys coming out. Again, this is John Kane. This is Let's Talk Native. Support WBAI. Go to the pledge line, 516-620-3602.
or www.give2wbai.org. That's G-I-V-E, the number two, WBAI.org. And when you make a donation or become a WBAI buddy, do it in the name of the show. Do it in the name of Let's Talk with John Kane. I want to thank you. Yahweh.